Tom Skurlock, a cowboy, gunfighter, and one of the founding members of the Regulators during New Mexico's Lincoln County War, commenced his journey as the sixth child among 11 siblings in Tallapoosa County, Alabama. He was born on January 11, 1850, to priestly Norman Skurlock and Esther Ann Brown. As he matured, he pursued a brief course in medicine in New Orleans, Louisiana, where he earned his moniker. However, due to concerns that he had contracted tuberculosis, he ventured to Mexico with the hope of finding a cure. Skurlock was characterized as having dark brown hair, brown eyes, a slight build, standing at just 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighing around 150 pounds. Despite his modest stature, he gained a reputation as a skilled gunfighter in Mexico. This reputation began when he and another man were engaged in a card game at a saloon. An argument erupted between Skurlock and one of the other players, eventually escalating to a deadly shootout. The altercation concluded with the other player dead, and Skurlock wounded, having been shot in the mouth, causing him to lose his two front teeth before the bullet exited through the back of his neck. Remarkably, Skurlock managed to survive. In 1871, Skurlock returned to the United States, where he found employment with John Chisholm in Texas. Two years later, Doc once again demonstrated his sharpshooting skills when he and another cowboy named Jack Holt were ambushed by a group of Indians. In the ensuing attack, Holt lost his life, but Skurlock sought cover behind some rocks. After hours of exchanging gunfire, Skurlock succeeded in killing the leader of the Indian group. He remained hidden until nightfall, allowing him to slip away unnoticed. Skurlock then walked approximately 20 miles to seek assistance. By May 1875, Chisholm had relocated his operations to New Mexico, and Skurlock became a part of the cowboys working at his ranch near Roswell. In September 1875, one of Skurlock's riding companions was killed by Indians, which deeply affected him. Doc was so distraught over the incident that he approached Chisholm with the intention of resigning. However, Chisholm was unwilling to see him go and refused to provide payment. Despite Chisholm's refusal, Skurlock was resolute in his decision and decided to claim his payment by taking three horses, two saddles, and a rifle. This act of taking property that wasn't rightfully his resulted in a warrant for his arrest, forcing him to flee to Arizona. Some of Chisholm's men pursued him, but upon hearing Skurlock's explanation, they eventually let him go. While in Arizona, Skurlock crossed paths with Charlie Boulder, and the two men ventured into the cheesemaking business along the Gila River. It's said that for a brief period, they even employed a young man who went by the name of Billy the Kid. However, their cheese factory venture didn't last long, and Skurlock and Boulder soon departed Arizona, heading to Lincoln County, New Mexico. In Lincoln County, they made a ranch purchase on credit from Lawrence G. Murphy, which was part of the illegal dealings linked to the L.G. Murphy and Ampey Coal Company monopoly, a significant contributing factor to the Lincoln County War. On September 2, 1876, Skurlock experienced a tragic accident when he unintentionally shot and killed his friend, Mike G. Harkins, who was the manager of John H. Riley's store at Blazer's Mill. Harkins had been examining a pistol at the time of the unfortunate incident. In the following month, on October 19, 1876, Skurlock tied the knot with Maria Antonia Miguela Herrera in Lincoln, New Mexico. Interestingly, his closest friend, Charlie Bodre, also married Maria's sister, establishing a unique brother-in-law relationship. Skurlock and his wife went on to have a total of 10 children. During this era, the rampant problem of horse and cattle rustling plagued Lincoln County leading Skurlock to participate in various posse efforts aimed at pursuing the thieves, some of whom were subjected to hanging as punishment. In January 1877, Skurlock and a neighbor named George Coe found themselves in a predicament. Lincoln County Sheriff William Brady arrested them on suspicions of sheltering a fugitive murderer who was part of the Jesse Evans gang, a man by the name of Frank Freeman. It's been reported that both Skurlock and Co. endured several days of alleged torture during their captivity before finally being released. During this period, Skurlock struck up friendships with a number of local ranchers, among them John Tunstall and Dick Brewer. 
when Tunstall, along with the assistance of a lawyer named Alexander McSween, established a competing business venture aimed at challenging the monopoly held by the Murphy and Dolan Mercantile and Banking Company over trade in Lincoln County. Skurlock openly aligned himself with Tunstall and McSween, openly defying the control exercised by Lawrence Murphy and James Dolan. Murphy and Dolan, however, not wanting to lose their lucrative business monopoly, began a series of retaliation efforts. When John Tunstall was killed in February 1878, all-out war erupted in Lincoln County, and fighting against the monopoly was a group called the Regulators, of which Skurlock was a founding member. In the battle at Blazer's Mills on April 4, 1878, Skurlock got shot in the leg by Buckshot Roberts, and the Regulator leader Dick Brewer was killed. There were several other clashes during the Lincoln County War, claiming the lives of more men, including Regulator leader Frank McNabb. After McNabb's death, Skurlock assumed the role of the third Regulator leader. When Sheriff William Brady, who was aligned with the Dolan Murphy faction, was replaced by John Copeland, who supported the McSween group, Skurlock briefly served as a deputy sheriff. The Lincoln County War persisted until November 1878, when the governor had to intervene, even threatening martial law. In an attempt to restore peace, the governor issued an amnesty for those involved in the Lincoln County War, who were not already facing charges. Notably, this amnesty did not extend to Billy the Kid. This officially marked the end of the Lincoln County War, but not before it claimed the lives of 19 individuals. A year later, Skurlock gave up his firearms and relocated to Texas, where he settled into a peaceful life. He distanced himself from his history of gunfights and rarely discussed it. Over the subsequent decades, he held various jobs and engaged in intellectual pursuits, such as reading classic literature and composing poetry. He passed away at the age of 79 in Eastland, Texas, on July 25, 1929.